and this right here is it. So it might not seem satisfactory to some people out there, but yeah, it is how it is. It's just like your regular O, number E or pi. You might know them better, but they are still just numbers, just like this oily macaroni without ketchup and mayonnaise. Constant right here. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. Papa Flemmy back with a crazy nice integrator, it's so awesome. So recently I googled Putnam integrals <laughs> because Papa wants to stay relevant <sighs> and people just enjoy Putnam stuff. And yeah, as the first hit on Google, I got recommended a little one-page PDF file where someone listed like five or six integrators out of Putnam and two of those we're going to discuss in the next time. One of those being this beautiful boy right here and Putnam wants us to show that this right here is indeed equal to gamma. That thing is called the oily macaroni constant. Mm. No, it's the Euler macaroni constant. Fun fact, if you slightly mistype Euler Mascheroni constant in Google. <laughs> Google is going to recommend you instead the Euler Macaroni constant. <laughs> mm, that's so Gucci, so Gucci. Yeah, so we want to show this right here today. And in the end, you are going to see one of the definitions of the Euler Mascheroni constant. We are going to work through everything and yeah, just take a look at the Wikipedia how this thing is actually defined. It's like a little difference of two diverging series, but they both diverge so slowly that we actually get a finite, probably irrational value. I'm not certain if this bad boy right here is irrational. And this right here fits really well with our theme in the last time. Kind of analytical number theory, okay? We are doing this stuff right here on this channel last time a little bit. Let's go in and get started. At first I would like to make use of the integral lin linearity, meaning breaking this up into two separate integrals. We're going to end up with an integral from 0 to 1 of dx over 1 minus x plus an integral from 0 to 1 of dx over ln of x. In number theory, this right here is actually quite a famous integral that's called the logarithmic integral discovered by Daddy Euler. If I remember correctly, it has something to do with distribution of primes. So take a look at Wikipedia. And this thing right here is basically equivalent to the exponential integral that diverges pretty hard, pretty fast. So yeah. Okay, let us move on. Now I would like to turn this around a bit and introduce some substitution one substitution on each integral. So let natural log of x kind of be equal to some other variable, but with a slight twist to it. I just don't want to get any negative infinity. So let's say that natural log of x is nothing but negative t, okay? Because if we plug zero into here, natural log would diverge to negative infinity, but with this negative sign, it goes to positive infinity. So just to get negative infinity stuff out of the way, it's ugly in any way, so no one wants that. If we differentiate that, we get that 1 over x dx is nothing but negative dt. What is 1 over x, you might ask? So if we multiply both sides by negative 1, we can bring this negative 1 as an exponent into here to get the natural log of 1 over x being equal to t. And then we can take um, base e on both sides to get that e to the t is nothing but 1 over x. Okay, I hope you agree with me. Meaning, that's actually equivalent to saying we have e to the t, dx is nothing but negative dt. And in voila, multiply both sides by e to the negative t because it's not equal to zero to get that dx is nothing but negative e to the negative t integrated with respect to t. Okay, coolio, first integrator out, out of the way. What's with this boy right here? Well, why not let one minus x be equal to t? I'm, I'm going to choose the same variable. I really don't give a shit just because I want to bring stuff together later in the game and I don't want to change variables once again. So let t be equal to one minus x. Also meaning that, well, dt is nothing but negative dx. Negative one is not equal to zero. We can multiply both sides by it to get that dx is nothing but negative dt. Okay, coolio. 
Let us move on. We're going to end up with an integral running from if we plug 0 into here, we are going to get a 1. If we plug 1 into here, 1 minus 1 is 0 in the natural numbers. So if you put 0 also in the set of natural numbers, it, it really depends. Let's say 0 is part of the integers, so 1 minus 1 is actually 0 in the integers. Who gives a shit about that? Okay, dx is nothing but negative dt over t. Then we are going to get positive. If we plug 0 into here, we have discussed this before we're going to get infinity. If we plug 1 into here, natural log of 1 is nothing but 0. Otherwise, dx is nothing but negative e to the negative t dt over, well, negative t, that's our natural log. We're going to do some up and lower bounds manipulation right now. We are going to dis distribute this negative sign into those up and lower bounds to change around the order of integration, okay? To change this from zero to one and this from zero to infinity. It just looks way more aesthetic this way. We're going to get an integral running from zero to one of dt over t. Here, we are going to get rid of one negative sign, distributing this into the up and lower bounds. Also, I want to bring one negative sign to the outside. It's just a constant, we can do this. Using the linearity of the integral, negative integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative t over t dt. Like I said, this right here is the exponential integral. Maybe you have heard of it before. E i dot x, no, of x. Okay, how can we move on now? I want you guys to consider one of the many, 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 many definitions of the exponential function. Basically, the exponential function is just the limit of a ratio, you could say. So we can interpret the exponential function e to the x as nothing but the limit as x uh, n approaches infinity, I'm terribly sorry, of, well, 1 plus x over n to the nth power. You might be familiar with this. Just take a look at your calc or anal one nodes. If you want to get a negative sign up here, just well, plug the negative into here and et voila, it turns out quite nicely. Meaning we are going to turn this around a little bit. Also, instead of x, use t. I'm terribly sorry for this change of notation. <laughs> integral from zero to one, dt over t negative integral from zero to infinity of the limit as n approaches infinity. Yeah, I've written this, I've written this limit in erratic letters. <laughs> Not a running joke on my um, channel right here, right now. One minus t over n, let's put it that way, to the nth power over t integrated with respect to t. It wouldn't really hurt us to actually take the limit as n approaches infinity of this part right here as well. Okay, so that's something we can do. Also, we can take the limit as n approaches infinity to the outside. This right here should be strictly positive. Okay, so it wouldn't really hurt us. We can just Fubini this shit probably. Also, we have infinity as the upper bound. Okay, so why not? Let's say that we have an n up here and let's take the limit simultaneously as this approaches infinity and as this approach is infinity, okay? You just have to make sure that you can actually interchange limits and stuff. If all of this is actually going to converge, so we are to, going to take the limit of this thing right here as n approaches infinity, that's a constant, it really doesn't, doesn't quite matter. We're going to interchange this and also simultaneously taking the limit up here. And if all of this actually converges, we can track this whole limit as n approaches infinity to the outside, doing a little limit Hadoken right here, okay? Or Falcon Punch, whatsoever. We know that it converges because it's going to converge to the oily macaroni constant, actually. I'm going to refer to this limit now as capital L, as always. Meaning we are going to take the whole limit as n approaches infinity of an integral from zero to one, dt over t minus an integral from zero to n now of one minus t over n to the nth power over t dt. Closing off the big brackets. If you are a pure mathematician, feel free to leave in the comments what the conditions are on doing all this limit stuff right here, right now. Now, we would like to manipulate this stuff a little bit algebraically. It would be pretty nice to break this right here up 
a little bit. So it makes way more sense in the process when I'm doing it. Just take a look at it. You see, if we take an integral from A to C, we can actually break this up using the area interpretation or something like this fundamental theorem of calculus into the integral from A to B plus the integral from B to C. That's something we can do. Let's do this in a clever way. We're going to break this integral up into 1 from 0 to 1 and then plus 1 from 1 to n. Okay, we can only do this if our integral right here converges for all the n up here. And it does, so as long as our integral doesn't go to infinity at the moment, we have to drag the limit to the outside, it really doesn't quite matter, so it's going to converge. Now, we're going to take the limit. As n approaches infinity of this integral from 0 to 1, dt over t. Also, we have this negative sign right here, don't forget it to distribute it into everything. Integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus t over n to the nth power over t dt. And then we have the second part, plus the integral from 1 to n, but we have this negative sign. So negative integral from 1 to n of 1 minus t over n to the nth power over t dt. And you see, the cool thing is we can make use of the linearity of the integral once again to bring those two together, actually. So that's really quite cool. With this breaking up of the integral, we actually made sure that something doesn't diverge. We are going to talk about this in a second. That's really a pretty cool trick right here that we are doing. So let's bring those two together. We also have the same denominator, so we can just use the additivity of our numerator up here. That's 1 times dt, so we have a 1 right here. That's the limit as n approaches infinity of the integral from 0 to 1. Something over t, and the something is nothing but 1 minus 1 minus t over n to the nth power integrated with respect to t. Also we have this negative integral from 1 to n of 1 minus t over n to the nth power over t integrated with respect to t. And we're not going to close off the brackets right now. We have to do a little bit more work. Now, it would be absolutely astonishing to bring those two integrals together once again. Because, like I said, integral from a to c is nothing but integral from a to b plus integral from b to c, if everything converges according to plan right here. So all that's really missing for us to do this, we have this one up here, so this fits very well together with this one, is to bring a one minus here. We have this negative sign already, so we can bring it here. Okay, so all that's really missing is an integral. We are going to add it to this whole thing from 1 to n of, well, dt over t. If we bring those two together, we have the very same integrand right here, and we can actually bring those two together. But we can just add something. No, 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 no. We can do algebraic manipulation inside the limit. That's, that's really fucking allowed because of epsilon delta stuff. But we have to make sure that what we are adding in here is just a zero, because if you have an apple and you don't place another apple next to it, you are still left off with just one apple. So we are going to subtract this integral right again. This integral must exist, otherwise yeah, you can just add a zero. That's some other stuff you have to take into account, but you are going to see that this right here actually exists at the moment. So subtracting this integral right again, and this is looking pretty dope right now. Okay, like I said, we can bring those two together. We are going to have the very same integral. Okay, so this is just this integral, but from 1 to n. And then we can use the line linearity of the integral, fundamental theorem of calculus, area interpretation to bring those two integrals together as just the integral from 0 to n of this integral. Also, we are left with this stuff right here. But what is this exactly? We can simply evaluate this. This is going to give us the natural log of t from 1 to n. Natural log of 1 is 0, so that's good. So we are going to be left with the natural log of n. Okay, coolio. So what do we have gathered? Oh, my, my little coke nose right here. No, <laughs> it's because of the chalk dust and therapy. So maybe I'm a bit allergic. I really don't know. We have an integral from 0 to n of this integral, 1 minus 1 minus t over n. If you couldn't follow anything I said, just take a piece of paper and try it out for yourself. It's pretty fucking easy, actually. Over t, integrated with respect to t, minus 
the natural log of n. Okay, and like I said in the beginning, our oily macaroni constant right here, this thing without ketchup, <laughs> is actually the difference of two diverging series. If we let n approach infinity, well, natural log of n, uh, natural log of infinity is going to go to infinity. It's going to diverge. So this thing right here is bound to be basically a diverging series overall, or a diverging function, whatever you can interpret this as a series. So we have to do a little bit more work on this right here, but it's really quite easy actually. What I would like to do is to get rid of this n up here once again. Why not make this a bit simpler and say that t over n is nothing but x once again, okay? Let t over n be nothing but x. If we differentiate that, that means that dt over n is nothing but dx. If n is not equal to zero, it isn't. It's strictly greater than zero by this condition right here. My boys, bruh, bruh, bruh. We can multiply both sides by n, okay? n times dx. And also, yeah, if you want to get t for yourself, it's going to be just n times x, okay? We can plug this stuff into here. Now we have the limit as n approaches infinity of an integral. If we plug zero into here, well, we are just going to get zero. If we plug n into here, n over n is going to give us one. Okay, then we have one minus, okay, by our substitution, this is nothing but one minus x to the nth power over, okay, this is n times x. But what is dt? dt is nothing but n times dx. You might notice that n and n is going to cancel out, Gucci, and then negative natural log of n. And I'm nearly out of space, that's why I'm going to Grab myself a new chalkboard right here. Try it out in the meantime, so in those two seconds that you have until the next clip starts. So I've erased a bit of stuff. You might still see this up here. And here, yeah, let's introduce another substitution. You might have been able to do this in one step here. You, you probably would have been able to do this in one iteration, but never mind that. What I would like to do, I would like to replace this one minus x as being a new variable. So let um, yeah, one minus x be equal to, I don't know, tau for example. Pretty fucking nice variable. And then we can subtract tau on both sides and add x on both sides. That's equivalent to saying that one minus tau is equal to x because we need our x right here. And if we differentiate that, that also means that negative d tau is nothing but dx, okay? Simple stuff. Now we can plug the stuff into here. We're going to get the limit as n approaches infinity of an integral from, if we plug zero into here, we are going to get one. And if we plug one into here, we are actually going to get zero once again. Then we have one minus t, oh no, it's tau this time, to the nth power over. We know what x is. x is nothing but one minus tau. And our dx is nothing but negative d tau. Okay, putting this in parentheses, treating it like a number, this little <laughs> differential, and then negative natural log of n. We can distribute this negative sign once again into here to turn stuff around a bit, integral from zero to one, getting rid of this negative sign. And now you might ask yourself what this ratio right here actually is. You can do polynomial long division. You can try to fact the shit out, or you can just take a look at one cool boy that we have derived before, the finite geometric series, which name doesn't make any sense because a, a series is defined as being the infinite summation <laughs> of sequences. Never mind. I don't really give a shit about mathematical notation and terminology. So if we take a look at our geometric boy from k equals to zero to n in this case of x to the k power, it's going to give us, we have derived this, nothing but um, 1 minus x to the um, n plus 1 over 1 minus x, okay? And if you replace this um, n plus 1 by just n, for example, then our sum is going to run to n minus 1. So it does make sense. And then we have this chunk right here. So it's just how it is. So by this geometric series stuff, finite shit, we're going to get this right here, okay? limit as n approaches infinity of an integral from zero to one of our finite summation boy right here. No infinity boy, finite boy. K equals to zero to n minus one of x to the kth power. Um, it's going to be 
a towel because I'm stupid. <laughs> Why am I using X for demonstration purposes? It really doesn't make any sense. And to create with respect to towel minus the natural log of N. Okay. That's just a finite summation, meaning we can, without any restrictions this, this time seriously, make use of the linearity of the integral. It's, it's not a limit problem right here. Let's bring this to the outside and then integrate tau to the kth power. We are going to get the limit of this finitey boy. Of, okay, integral from 0 to 1 of tau to the kth power is going to give us 1 over k plus 1 times tau to the k plus 1th power. So tau to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 from 0 to 1 and then minus the natural log of n. If we plug 0 into here, that's just a simple polynomial, it's going to vanish completely. If we plug 1 into here, okay, then 1 to any power is just 1 and then we are going to be left with this limit as n approaches infinity of a sum running from k equals to 0 to n minus 1 of 1 over k plus 1 minus the natural log of n. And this right here, my boys and girls, if you make a little change of variable, k plus 1 being equal to, I don't know, s for example, okay, then it's going to run to n in this case. So by change of variable index movement, you can actually turn this into a sum running from k equals to one in um, yeah k equals to one to n in this case of one over k. And this thing right here is nothing but the harmonic series of the nth degree, if you say it like this. And this right here, if n approaches infinity, is diverging. I maybe have already made a proof on that. So we have the difference of two diverging series. We let n approach infinity and despite that we are still going to get a finite answer. The euler mascheroni constant. And this right here is it. So it might not seem satisfactory to some people out there, but yeah, it is how it is. It's just like your regular O number E or pi. You might know them better, but they are still just numbers, just like this oily macaroni without ketchup and mayonnaise constant right here. I thank you guys for watching. That right here is our answer. So um, if you want it in a separate line, we are going to get the limit as n approaches infinity of our harmonic series minus the natural log of n. And this by definition is our oily macaroni constant. Yeah, I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this crazy ass integral, then feel free to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to support the channel in many different ways by the teachers I created. So uh, go take a look at my second channel and the live streams I'm doing there. And yeah, uh, support on the channel on Patreon, whatsoever. I love you guys, appreciate you, and thank you guys for watching so much. Up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya. <laughs>